Lowther Castle has been home to the Lowther family since the reign of Edward I. The castle and gardens are just part of their estate that still dominates Cumbria. Much of it is still in use, but after the death of the 5th Earl of Lunsdale, the castle lay uninhabited. To save it from complete dereliction, a charitable trust stepped in. An injection of £9 million is helping restore this impressive site, opening it up to the public for the first time in 70 years. Andrew Mercer is the man overseeing the project. Wow, Andrew, this is, um, <laughs> this is quite something, isn't it? <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit to do. We've been at it now for, what, a couple of months or so, but as you can see, there's a huge amount of restoration and conversion work to do here. <laughs> In terms of the main castle itself, are you going to tackle that? Are you going to put a roof on it or are you going to keep it as a ruin? It's a ruin. It, that's what it is. It sits lovely, uh, grandly and, and very elegantly in the landscape. It has a real presence. We don't need a roof to be put back on it. We're all very keen to see it as a proper, well-consolidated ruin that will be a great landmark in this, in this wonderful countryside. Yeah. There's lots of clever people at sea, there's lead workers, there's the roofers, there's the stonemasons, there's a whole army of craftsmen. And today we've probably had seven or eight apprentices working on site, learning these new and traditional skills. And I think, to be honest, as an apprentice, to have the opportunity to uh, come and learn your, learn your skills on such a great building as this must be a great, uh, great fun and great joy. One of the first jobs for the stonemasons is making safe the existing stonework. Now, as you can see, Behind me, hundreds of tonnes of work stone have been taken off of this building, carefully cleaned and then restored. But now, of course, comes the task of putting the whole thing back together. This is what's known in the trade as a merlon. It's one of the little square pieces that turn this from a straightforward country house into a crenellated castle. And this is going up there. All right, Steve. I think I've lost count of the number of ladders. <laughs> oh, hey, look, there's the block. Now then, is Stanley up here as well? Stanley? He is. He is. Hey. <laughs> Hello, mate. Nice That's to see you. How are you? Hi. There we are. So there's our, our, our Merlon. It is. Isn't it gorgeous? What a view you fellas have to work with. It's fantastic, isn't it? And is that the old Mason's Mark on the end? That is the Mason's Mark, yes. I mean, there's a terrific kind of, you know, heritage to these That's things. That's right. Yeah. 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 Restoration on this scale takes real skill. Each merlon has to be removed and cleaned. Limestone mortar then secures it to where it originally sat over 200 years ago. Well done, Stanley. So that's it then? The 20th one done? Yes. How many more to go? Uh, 150. <laughs> <laughs> the plans for the grounds are just as impressive. In its heyday, Lowther had one of the grandest gardens in England. Now, acres of parks, woodlands, pond and walkways are waiting to be rediscovered. Landscape designer Dominic Cole has the task of reviving the 17th century garden for everyone to enjoy. This is the central core of the garden. We're, we're restoring pretty much most of it. So what's all this going to be? The lawns? These are going to be different types of lawns, so some of them will be formal, some of them we want to have as wildflowers, so we're going to use wildflowers from a from, uh, local area. We'll work with the ecologists to do that. And then this, for instance, is a memory of the bowling green, very formal again, and then a bulb lawn, so you have something for all seasons. We're, we're taking that formal structure, formal structure of the paths, and using that as the basis onto which we're going to overlay our garden from this, this generation. So you're not actually kind of rebuilding the past, you're giving a flavour of what it was like. That, that, that's right, because there's, there's so much going on here. And um, what we can do now is go up and look at another period, one of the summer houses. Lovely. What's exciting is we're walking through from one, one period to another. Um, and what we're just coming up to now is a much later, later period, the Victorian period. Wow. Um, <laughs> what is this? This is one of the Victorian summer houses, and it's just got this most wonderful character. It's almost Hansel and Gretel. Isn't you, it? You've got the gingerbread sort of... house. Yeah. But it's got all its original decoration, and it's, it's terribly exciting to find it. Um, and the, there were actually 24 of these throughout the gardens, so and there's just a couple left. Will you be using it again? Very much so. I mean, the, the, what we're not quite sure of is we're assuming that, in this case, the planting is actually holding it together. You can see the two ivies on either side, which are now very much entangled with the decoration. 
So we're thinking that this actually probably won't need an awful lot more than a haircut. Right. And we're certainly not going to attempt to strip the ivy off it. Well, this whole place is idyllic, isn't it, really? Oh, it's well, fantastic. It would be if you... it wasn't for all the noise <laughs> that your men are making. I apologise for the noise. <laughs> yes, we're doing some tree work, more, more clearance to open up new views. And this, of course, is, will be next on the menu, this fan fantastic vista down the pond from the summer house. With more than 100 acres to play with, Dominic and his crew have certainly got their work cut out. Well, Jules, you've been at the big house. Let me show you the view now from a little house. Look at that, isn't it <laughs> yeah. sweet? The Diamond Jubilee Summer House for the Lonsdale family. But look at the view that it has. Perfectly sighted, isn't it? Isn't that fantastic? And this view uh, was really just the view of the Lonsdale family and their visitors, but now... We can all have a look at it. We've all got a chance. It's wonderful, isn't it? And I, I have to say, what I like about this place is that they're, they're doing a very inclusive project. I mean, obviously, the house has got its issues, but I love the fact they're going for this, this romantic ruin. They're also opening up the stable block to make that, you know, a, a real venue for visitors. And as you've seen, 130 acres of gardens that we can all now explore, as you say. And, and a place that was very much at risk has now been saved. And from what you've seen, do you think money well spent? I do indeed. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. There are heritage heroes here, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs>